Today, in this video, we'll discuss about hemolytic uremic syndrome. HUS is a thrombotic microangiopathy characterized by intravascular hemolysis, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. So what are thrombotic microangiopathies? These are a group of diseases characterized by endothelial dysfunction and the formation of platelet and fibrin-rich thrombi in small blood vessels. Uh, this include diseases like hemolytic uremic syndrome, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, health syndrome in the pregnancy, DIC, malignant hypertension, antiphospholipid syndrome, scleroderma renal crisis. HUS can be classified into hereditary and the acquired HUS. Hereditary HUS usually occurs because of the complement gene mutations, inborn errors of the cobalamin C metabolism, and diacyl glycerol kinase epsilon gene mutations. Whereas acquired HUS occurs because of the infections like STC infection, streptococcus pneumonia infection, HIV infection, and it can be related to the autoantibodies to the complement factors, can occur because of the drug toxicity, pregnancy, and the autoimmune disorders as well. So this is the preferred classification. However, there is other classification which is frequently used in the clinical practice in which HUS is classified into typical HUS, which is uh, post-infectious HUS, a typical HUS complement mediate HUS and the secondary HUS. This typical HUS usually occurs after the infection with the cigatoxin producing E. coli and other infections. A typical HUS usually occurs because of the uncontrolled complement activation. And secondary HUS, it occurs uh, with a coexisting disease like malignancy or other autoimmune diseases. So this typical HUS is caused by the cigatoxin producing bacteria. This is the most common cause of the typical HUS or the post-infectious HUS. Uh, this cigatoxin is produced by uh, by the various E. coli like O157, O26, O1, O4, and all these serotypes are responsible for typical HUS. Similarly, other than E. coli, Sigala dysentery type 1 and the Citrobacter prendi are also responsible for the HUS. Moreover, Streptococcus pneumonia, Influenza A, Enterovirus, HIV, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa are also the causes of uh, post-infectious hemolytic uremic syndrome. A typical HUS, it occurs because of the complement uh, dysregulation. Uh, this dysregulation can be genetic or acquired, and the genetic dysregulation can occur because of the mutations in the gene encoding for factor H, factor I, factor B, and there can be rearrangements or deletion in the genes encoding complement factor H-related protein. Similarly, acquired complement dysregulation can occur because of antifactors, antibodies, monoclonal gammopathy, and mutations in the diacyl glycerol kinase epsilon. Secondary HUS occurs in the autoimmune diseases like SLE, APLA, scleroderma. It can be pregnancy-related in health syndrome in postpartum period. It can occur after transplantation like solid organ transplantation, bone marrow transplantation. And it can occur in the malignancy after the use of the chemotherapy like mitomycin, cisplatin, or bleomycin. Or it can occur secondary to the ionizing radiation. Similarly, some drugs like quinine, calcineurin inhibitors, OCPs, antiplatelets like clopidogrel, triclopidine can also cause this secondary HUS. Moreover, secondary HUS is also associated with cobalamin metabolism disorder like methylmalonic aciduria and homocysteinuria. And it can also occur in the Dennis Strass syndrome. And in rare cases, it can be familial. 90% of the cases of the HUS are because of the infection with cigatoxin producing bacteria. And 10% of the HUS are either typical, or typical HUS or secondary HUS. So this uh, interhemorrhagic E. coli associated HUS is the most common cause of HUS, which follows GI infection. It occurs up to 2 to 21 days after the onset of the bloody diarrhea. Approximately 15% of the EHC associated gastroenteritis uh, develop HUS. The use of the antimotility agents like loperamide increases the risk of HUS. Those young children less than 5 years and the elderly are more prone to developing this hemolytic uremic syndrome. And this disease usually does not recur. A typical HUS can be sporadic or familial. Uh, it's an ultra rare disease with incidence of around 0.5 to 2 per million. And it's associated with the dysregulation of alternate pathway of the complement. So many patients, uh, although they have the mutations or the dysregulation in the complement, they don't uh, develop HUS unless triggered by the infection, transplants, or pregnancy. Onset of a uh, typical HUS is less abrupt than EHC associated HUS and it can occur at any age but it's more frequent in the childhood. The recurrences can be triggered by the infections and the course of the disease can vary uh, in the different patients. Some patients can develop recurring episodes of acute disease ultimately leading to the ESRD whereas some patients can present with a terminal renal failure 
at the first presentation and this um, disease can recur after transplantation as well some patient can also present with extra renal manifestations like digital gangrene cerebral or per, uh, peripheral vessel stenosis ophthalmological neurological involvement secondary to the vascular in injury induced by the complement activation. Uh, the basic pathogenesis of the hemolytic uremic syndrome involves the vicious cycle of this uh, complement activation, endothelial damage, platelet activation, and the formation of the thrombus. So this vicious cycle uh, is the major uh, pathogenesis in the hemolytic uremic syndrome. In uh, interhemorrhagic E. coli-associated HUS, uh, when there is infection in the gut, the cigatoxin is released into the gut, and uh, this cigatoxin, after injuring the intestinal epithelium, uh, it gains access into the circulation and binds through the blood cells uh, when it circulates. So when it binds to the blood cells, it uh, activates those cells, like it activates the platelets and the leukocytes. And the toxin released um, in the circulation or within the microvesicles, they undergo endocytosis in the glomerular and the peritubular capillary endothelial cells leading to the damage of these endothelial cells. Because of the activated platelet in combination with the endothelial cell damage, there is formation of the thrombus. So when there is thrombus in the glomerular capillaries, red cells are mechanically fragmented on uh, the microthrombi in combination with the complement induced hemolysis leading to the anemia. Moreover, the microvesicles, they transport the toxin between the cells as well as via the basement membrane to the tubular epithelium, thus affecting the entire nephron. So this is the mechanism of the interhemorrhagic E. coli associated HUS. Hemolysis in the interhemorrhagic E. coli associated HUS occur because of the mechanical breakdown of the red cells and the capillaries partially occluded by the microthrombi. Uh, hemolysis also occurs because of the complement activation on the RBC induced by the SIGA toxin as well. Thrombocytopenia is the result of the platelet activation and deposition of the aggregates in the microthrombi along the damaged vascular wall. Moreover, platelet activation can occur because of the SIGA toxin directly or because of the lipopolysaccharide and the cytokines released by the activated monocytes or the endothelial cells. The prothrombotic state occurs secondary to the endothelial cell injury. This endothelial cell injury leads to the enhanced platelet activation and the subendothelium thrombin generation, tissue factor release, elevated microvesicles in the circulation and uh, these are responsible for the formation of the thrombus and there is also decreased fibrinolysis, lysis uh, which helps in the uh, progression of the thrombus. Patient develops renal failure because of the prothrombotic vascular injury. Uh, this uh, occurs because of the occluding microthrombi in the glomeruli. Moreover, other than this um, microthrombi, acute toxin induced tubular injury can also lead to the renal failure. Moreover, activation and influx of the neutrophil cytokines and activation of the complement system also plays a role in the renal failure. In atypical HUS, there is a dysfunctional complement regulation resulting in the complement activation on the host cell via the alternate pathway. So majority of the patients with atypical HUS have the heterozygous mutations in the complement components, uh, which leads to the uninhibited complement activation in the host endothelium and the platelets. This uninhibited complement activation on the host and endothelium and the platelet induces the cell injury and a prothrombotic state uh, with fragmentation of the RBCs. Patient usually present with the pallor because of the hemolytic anemia. And patient can also present with the sign and symptoms of, symptoms of the renal failure like edema, nausea, MSCs, oliguria, high blood pressure. Patient can also present with the jaundice because of the hemolysis, can present with the purpura and bleeding because of thrombocytopenia. But there can be the elevated liver function test and patient can present with a seizure, coma or stroke if there's neurological involvement. Some presentations are associated with the worse outcomes like neurological involvement, is associated with a poor outcome. Similarly, leukocytosis, low platelet counts, and the long duration of the anuria is also associated with the worse outcomes. So most common differential diagnosis which we need to rule out include thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Similarly, we have to rule out DIC, Evans syndrome, and the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. So for the lab diagnosis of the HUS, we can perform various tests. We can do the hematological analysis. We can look for the features of hemolysis like LDS, reticulocyte count, haptoglobin, unconjugated bilirubin, bloody smear can be done to look for schistocytes. Similarly, Coombs test can be done. Platelet count is usually decreased. Patient can present with a leukocytosis or neutrophilia, which is associated with a poor prognosis. Biochemical analysis can be done to look for the features of renal failure. Uh, serum creatine is usually elevated. Urea is also elevated. Patient can present with hyperkalemia and acidosis. Hyponatremia and hypoalbuminemia might suggest the GI loss. Similarly, hyperglycemia is suggestive of the pancreatic 
involvement and elevated LFTs such as the hepatic involvement. Microbiological analysis is done to identify the bacteria if a uh, EHEC associated HUS is suspected. We can uh, test the feces for the uh, EHEC gene or we can also look for the SIGA toxin. Similarly, serology can be done to look for the EHEC virulence factors. Similarly, blood culture, respiratory fluid analysis, urine culture can be done. And if streptococcus pneumonia infection is suspected, T antigen lectin binding assay can be done. Urine analysis might show hematuria, proteinuria, and the features of glomerular injury. In cases of the atypical HUS, serum can be tested for the protein levels of C3, C3DZ, factor S, factor I, factor B, and for the anti factor H antibodies. A DNA analysis can be done to look for the mutations in the factor H, factor I, C3, factor B. And similarly, cell assays can be done to look for the MCP expression on the leukocytes, C3 and C5B29 deposition on the endothelial cells, and as well as Coombs test can also be done. If streptococcus pneumonia associated HES is suspected, T uh, antigen lectin assay can be done. Moreover, direct antiglobulin test will be positive. If uh, DZKE associated HUS is suspected, then we can look for the DZKE gene mutations. If cobalamin disorder is suspected, we can uh, test the urine for homocysteinuria, methylmalonic aciduria, serum and blood can be tested for homocysteinemia, methylmalonic acidemia, similar DNA. Uh, DNA analysis can be done to look for cobalamin uh, type C mutations. Talking about the treatment of HUS, treatment of the various subtypes of the HUS is uh, similar and supportive. Uh, supportive care in include the renal replacement therapy, which can be hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, or continuous renal replacement therapy. Adequate hydration and nutrition is very important. Correction of the electrolyte disturbances and acidosis is also very important. Moreover, control of the hypertension and seizure are also the integral part of the management. So fluid replacement is uh, important to replace the insensible loss and replace the urine output, as well as excess hydration in the patient with the renal failure is usually avoided. Blood transfusion is usually not recommended unless there is absolute indication. Platelet transfusion is uh, usually not done unless platelet count is below 10,000 or if, if a patient is at risk due to active bleeding or if patient requires any surgery. For the interhemorrhagic E. coli associated HUS, volume expansion has a nephroprotective effect when given before the onset of the HUS. However, after the development of the HUS, uh, volume expansion can help to reduce the pre-renal component of the AKI, and it also reduces the need for dialysis during established HUS. So volume expansion is uh, very important. Antibiotics, they are usually avoided during, uh, during the pre-HUS phase because they increase the risk of HUS. But once the HUS has developed, there is no evidence that antibiotic treatment is harmful, so they can be used. Plasma infusion or exchange has little evidence for its efficacy in EHEC associated HUS. Similarly, use of equilizumab is controversial, but it has been used in the various studies and has been shown to be beneficial in some studies. Renal transplantation is required for those patients who do not regain their renal function after acute phase of the disease. For the treatment of a typical HUS, if there is associated anti-factor as antibodies, the patient can be treated in acute phase with the plasma exchange combined with immunosuppressive therapy like prednisolone, cyclophosphamide pulses, or rituximab, and the maintenance therapy can be started with the prednisolone with either mycophenolate mofetil or azathioprine. Similarly, eclizumab is also approved for the treatment of atypical HUS. Uh, it's an anti-C5 antibody which blocks the C5 and the formation of the terminal uh, cascade or this membrane attack complex. Uh, this eclizumab prevents the hematological recurrence and the renal failure. Uh, it also prevents the HUS relapse after the transplantation and guidelines recommend the initiation of treatment as soon as possible uh, before thorough complement genetic investigation is completed. But while using eclizumab, we have to be a little bit extra cautious because it, uh, it is associated with the increased risk of infection with encapsulated bacteria, particularly meningococci. So patients should be vaccinated against meningococci infection at least two weeks before commencing the treatment and patients should also be in the are vaccinated against the other encapsulated organisms like Haemophilus influenzae or Streptococcus pneumoniae. However, if, they, if the treatment was given in the acute episode, patients are prophylactically treated with antibiotics 
to prevent the meningococcal infection until vaccination is given. So for the streptococcus pneumonia associated HUS, eradication of the bacterial stain with the antibiotics is the treatment. This DZKE associated HUS, they don't respond to the equilizumab and some patients respond to the plasma therapy. For the cobalamin dysfunction associated HUS, we need to treat the underlying disorder with hydroxycobalamin, betaine folinic acid. Uh, plasma exchange has been shown to be helpful in some cases. Most patients with EHEC associated HUS make a full recovery. The worst outcome uh, occurs in those patients with the neurological involvement, those who present with high neutrophil counts, with low platelet counts, and who have long duration of the anuria. Whereas in atypical HUS, prognosis is dependent on the presence of the specific mutation or autoantibodies. However, prognosis has significantly improved after the advent of Equilizumab. So these are the references which we used while creating our video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos.